Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is April 24th, and today on New Knives, we're gonna figure out if the Civivi Cubit can open a bottle. Let's talk knives. First knife on the table today is the Petrified Fish Knives Viking. So I will not lie to you, I don't quite know where the Viking came from. This doesn't quite have Norse vibes to me, maybe it does to you. But what it does have is a sizable front flipper. And oftentimes front flippers end up being somewhat compact, everyday carry sizable knives. I think it's kind of fun to see one that's a bit bigger, beefier, and a bit ready for a bit more work and play. This one uses a K110 blade and it goes for $46.95. And I must confess, I have an ever-growing collection of petrified fish knives because their actions are just so good. And they flick really well and they have really fun designs. They make big, sturdy knives that fill out the hand really well. And they are so affordable. So it's really hard for me to say no to them. You hold them and you think, wow, that's a really good knife for a really great price. And that is the way of petrified fish. One thing petrified fish uses a lot of is Bowler K110, which is very similar to D2, but because of Bowler's super fancy modern metallurgical practices, it ends up with a very fine grain structure. So it performs really well, especially for that price of $46.95 on this Viking. Next up, we have the Finch Knives Flint. This one's going for $145, and I believe this is the largest Finch knife I've seen to date. This one has sort of an old school hunter knife vibe. Got a very deep belly, almost a Lanny style blade. This one has the ironwood handle and the 154 cm blade, so it's gonna be a great performer. And what I love about Finch knives is they are everything you love about a traditional. It's got the handle you want, it's got this nice bolster, it's got a very clean design, but it's also everything you want about a modern. It's got a modern blade steel, it's got a modern lock, it's got a pocket clip, and it's got a really snappy, smooth action. And I really appreciate Finch knives for that. I'm not sure that traditionals are quite my style. I generally don't opt for one in my pocket, but I believe this is a great gateway either from traditionals to moderns or moderns to traditionals. But I don't wanna call it a modern traditional because I feel like that would be to limit it in some way. Anyway, the Finch Knives Flint series is, it might be the one that gets me, the, the, flint, the Finch that gets me to buy one. Really cool knife, really great action too, very smooth. Next up, new from Kun Wu. A few weeks ago we talked about the XDAO that came out. And this is the XDAO, but instead of a titanium handle, it's got a carbon fiber handle, and it is a full carbon fiber handle. Full thickness, not peel ply or anything. And this thing is comfy, it is light, and that crossbar is so smooth to operate. Just look at that, look at that! That's what you want your knives to look like in terms of action. And it locks up really solid, uses an LMAX blade, so you're gonna get crazy fine grain. Nice, good toughness out of a stainless, and incredible edge retention and corrosion resistance to boot. And it's got the integrated backspacer lanyard tube and just such a clean, easy to operate knife. And for its price of 219, there's a lot of Benchmade knives that run in that price, but this one I feel can run with them all day long. And it offers a, a, a blade material I've never seen on a Benchmade. I've seen M390, but never LMAX on a Benchmade. Kunwu XDAO 219 with the carbon fiber handles. Next up, we have the Spyderco Small Fly 2. And this is a butterfly knife, and I know Spyderco isn't exactly known for their butterflies, but if they keep making knives like this, they will be soon. What I like about this one is it differentiates itself from a lot of butterfly knives because they are all in an arms race for who can have the best flip ability. Like I have my butterfly knife I've been carrying a lot lately. This is the Flytanium Talisong Z. And it's a great knife. It really is, it flips well. I've come to appreciate its abilities. However, when it comes times to slice bread or open a box, I find myself reaching for my folder more often. Doesn't bother me, I'm more than happy to carry more than one knife, but a lot of people would rather only carry one. But if you want to get into butterfly flipping and at the same time have a knife that is an, ex an excellent EDC knife, I would say the options are very slim, but the Small Fly 2 might be one of them. This one has a CPM crew wear blade, so if you drop it, you're not gonna break your tip. The edge is gonna hold really well and it's a bit smaller. As you can see, it's about the same size as these folders. I'll put it up next to that Kun Wu. It's just about the same size as your everyday carry folding knife, but it flips really well. The other knife from my memory that comes to mind is the Benchmade 53, and that one's been discontinued for a while, but that one definitely was an everyday carry knife that was a bally. 
So if you are looking for something like that, may I recommend the Spyderco Small Fly 2. Next up, we have the Real Steel Knives Hoogan. And this one is a thing with the crossbar lock that I just wish we saw more of. Generally speaking, if you want a crossbar lock and you want a long knife that is still nice and slim, the answer has been Benchmade Fact. And I love the Benchmade Fact, don't get me wrong, but if you want something a little bit more budget friendly with that butt lock bar, the, the Hoogan is really coming in to give us what we want, what we were asking for, because this is a very slim, dare I would say, gentleman style knife. Not too wide, but it still has plenty of length. And my problem with very small, slim knives is sometimes they don't have enough reach to get through whatever you're cutting. The classic example I use is an apple. So oftentimes a blade might be too thick and it'll split the apple, but most EDC knives don't have that problem. But many of them are too short. You can't get through the apple. You have to do a bunch of weird cuts. And it gets hard to core the thing. This will not have any of those problems. It'll reach all the way through your biggest apples. I'm sure somebody's gonna fact check me on that. I'm sure there's some big apples out there, but this one it will reach through the apples for the most part. It'll slice them really nicely and it won't break the bank while doing it. You're getting a VG10 blade, this nice G10 handle for $95.20, under $100 for a very nice crossbar style knife that could slip into a suit coat as well as it could a pair of jeans. Next up, we got a lot from Wee and Civivi. They have been swinging for the fence this year with some really great designs. First, we have an update of the CVV Elementum. They have not forgotten that one. The Elementum 2 is out and it's great. It's the button lock version, but the original liner lock is still here with a D2 blade. And this one has this ivory G10 handle with this frag texture. Uh, actually, our videographer was saying that this frag texture kind of reminds him of one of the costumes from The Empire Strikes Back. If you're gonna carry a knife to Hoth, I think this one would be great. It would blend in really well and it's got the texture to put you in a galaxy far, far away a long, long time ago. Really great Elementum, but I won't get too deep into it because you have been beat to death about the Elementum. It's a great knife. Next up, we have some new variations of the Altus model. This one has the aluminum handle with the Nitro V blade, and this is one of those button locks that have become so popular. And I like how this one is a thumb stud. Civivi so tends to run a lot of flippers, but recently on some of their button locks, they've been doing thumb studs, and they are just so fidgety. I have come to really enjoy a good thumb stud. And I enjoy the aluminum handles too. Something about a metal handle just instills in me a sense of confidence. And this right here is a great knife for that. I will say my hand just barely fits in that handle. If your hand is any bigger than mine, the Altus might be a little small for you. However, if it's my hand or smaller, this is gonna be a very comfortable everyday carry knife. Next up on the new side, we have the Civivi Cubit. And this one has the aluminum handle as well and a very, very thin 14C 28N blade, a recessed pocket clip with recessed screws, and it is one of the snappiest button lock actions ever. But around the office when we saw this, we saw this little hook right here, and that's where it engages the stop pin back here. We were thinking, could that be a bottle opener? So we're gonna find out right here, right now. Got ourselves a Coke. Oh my goodness, that works really well. I've hit it a second time. There it goes. Man, I hate Coke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up from Wii, we have the Magnetron. And the Magnetron is definitely a large titanium frame lock. You're probably getting a three and a half inch blade with a forward finger choil if you want to choke up but I'd probably choke back and let that beautiful blade profile just show its colors to everybody. It's got the, this one in particular has this cool marble carbon fiber inlay. I wanna say that's the Mars Valley, I could be wrong. Got the milled titanium pocket clip, 20 CV blade. It is as premium as we could ever be with a really fun design. These are going for 365.50 starting. The Dama Steel ones are quite a bit more expensive than that, but I personally would go with the 20 CV. This knife is really good looking and it feels really good in the hand too. And then lastly, the knife that I really would like to buy, but unfortunately the boss says no, and even if the boss said yes, I don't know that I could afford it. We have the Wii Exiton. This is not to be confused with the Eschaton, which is an Elijah Isham design. This is the Exiton, and this one is a has an integral carbon fiber backspacer and a very smooth button lock flipper action. And let's see if you can flick it. Oh yeah, you can. So recently the Zithius came out, it actually won some awards at Blade Show Texas. 
but the Exciton is my preference in that, from those two of the super premium titanium button locks from Wii, because I really prefer this drop point blade rather than the Warncliffe of the Xiphius. However, if you like this knife, you better act fast because it is a limited edition. These will not be around long, and if the Xiphius is anything to go off of, they are popular and they will go fast. Anyway, that is new knives for the week. Hope you've enjoyed it. You can find all these knives and more at bladehq.com, and we'll see you next time. Hey, hey up, hey up, hey up.